Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. Uh, this session will be a discussion regarding troubleshooting the shunt. This is a very complex topic. There are lots of dilemmas involved in the management of shunts with a suspicion of an infection or malfunction. Uh, Dr. Joel Boas from Indiana University and Goodman Campbell Brain and Spine, a pediatric neurosurgeon, will, dis will be discussing this complex topic. Again, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for asking me to come and talk about troubleshooting the shunt and diagnosing problems with it. Thank you, Joel. So let's go ahead and review the basics and the disclosures, none of which really interfere with the presentation today. One of the uh, main uh, dilemmas that as neurosurgeons on call we run into is the worried mom or the anxious mom who calls in with the uh, suspicion of a shunt malfunction in her young child with obviously a history of shunt that was placed in a various period of time recently versus in a, young, in a long past. And we always are in this dilemma, should the child be brought to the emergency room or this is something that potentially unrelated to the shunt? Would you somewhat start your discussion with some of the details relevant to answer that dilemma? I think that taking care of patients with shunts that may live quite some distance from your hospital is always difficult. And ideally, it should be a collaborative effort between the pediatrician or primary care doctor who knows children and their health best, you who knows hydrocephalus and the shunt, and the parent that knows their own specific child. And none of those expertises are a real substitute for the others. Um, so that by talking to the mother and potentially figuring out how high of a suspicion you have for a shunt problem, you avoid excess trips to your emergency room or clinic. Um, on the other hand, if a child is sick, then you know that they can come to see you. Some of the things that I think parents may tell you about that are of concern certainly headaches. Um, headaches in a child that's old enough to complain are one of the most common um, problems that, that would suggest that the shunt is not working the way it should. Vomiting or lethargy or other things, uh, any decline in the visual performance, and that could include um, turning the head to the side or nystagmus or not being able to see the board at school. We do not like to see any decline in a child's performance, whether that's school performance or developmental milestones. Once a child has achieved a given level, we do not permit them to get worse without being concerned. And the last thing that I think parents will oftentimes tell you is that the eyes look different, that something is different about the child's eyes or their appearance. Headaches may be seen in children of all different ages, and one of the most important ways that we can determine whether those headaches are related to high pressure, low pressure, or are unrelated to pressure is the temporal and positional correlates of the headaches. In other words, what time of day and in what position are the headaches most severe? It worries me most if a child wakes up at night with a headache or first thing in the morning with a headache that gets better as the day goes on. This is important because the pressure in the head is highest at night when the patient is flat and they are relatively hypoventilating, which means that they will have cerebral vasodilatation. So I always worry most about headaches that are present on awakening in the morning um, before the child gets out of bed. Such a patient may decide that they need to have several pillows or to sleep in a recliner or something of this sort. The opposite side would be the child that wakes up feeling pretty good, but by 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning is feeling poorly at school, goes to the nurse's office and lies down, feels better after lying down for a half hour, and then once again at 3 or 4 o'clock is, is ready to lie down again. That timing and the suggestion that the patient is better when flat would suggest that that child is, is suffering from low pressure rather than high. 
So I always ask the parents a bit about the temporal and positional correlate